Hello. Hello. I'm Laura, and you're Mike. I am Mike Lindsay. You're Laura Marling. I'm Laura Marling, and we're in a band called Lump. Yeah. Is it a band? It is a band. Um. Yeah. Yeah, it's a band. We're in a band called Lump. We're definitely in a band, and its name is Lump. So I'd say that we're yeah. in a band called Lump. But we have other... We exist outside of Lump as well. Mm. But we're here today to talk about Lump. Yes. Yeah. So, we've made two albums of of Lump material, haven't we? We've just finished Lump 2, a.k.a. Animal. Animal. And we had Lump 1, which was just called Lump. Yep. Yeah. These are all good facts. Yeah. <laughs> um, how did we come up with the name Lump? Well, we didn't come up with the name Lump. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we were walking around the studio for a while trying to think of a name after we had done a couple of tunes, maybe three tunes for the first record. And we, we thought, oh, this is something. This is something's happening. This is a this is a band or, you know, this is a new kind of sonic journey. I wonder what it would be called. And you told me a story yeah. that you, your four or five year old niece, whose name is Loa, Loa once saw you doing a sound check and you were playing drums and you were pretending to be in a band and you said, Loa, what do you want to call our band? And she said, Lump! Yeah. And you thought that was a badass name for a band, so mm-hmm. we stole it, actually. Yeah. How does she feel about that? Uh, well, she's 10 now. She loves Lump. I went to take her to school recently, as I sometimes do, and... Uh, on the bus she talked about Lump the whole way and then when we got there her two little friends came running up to me and said and started with they all started whispering and I didn't really know what they were talking about and then Loa um, was like yeah she's the one that's in Lump oh really yeah, oh, so she's, she's been telling all her she's, friends she's not flagging up the um, this is you know Miss Marling here. she's like no she doesn't no, no, they don't like, care about the kids don't care about lump, Marling total Lump yeah. kid yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was nice uh, that's a nice story about how Lump name came to be Mm. But there's also another element to Lump that is the sort of mascot element. What's yeah. that? Well, I guess probably because of the way Lower said Lump, mm. the connotations that other people might have when you look at that word might be something else, you know, uh, in the medical world, for example. But something about the sort of childlike kind of fantasy uh, sort of element of the word it sort of felt really playful and it felt like a character and then suddenly I think as soon as we realized Lump was a being um, it allowed us to kind of finish the sonic journey uh, into whichever part of the parallel universe Lump lives in and that's that sort of so Lump is a kind of sort of furry yeti for uh, album one Mm -hmm. um non-gender specific yes who was created by visually created by Esteban Diacono who you yeah. who you found mm-hmm. as a digital artist yeah I can't claim ownership over him no no he, he existed, <laughs> he existed before, before you found before, him yeah. yeah he was much he's a much bigger deal than Lump will possibly <clears throat> ever be yeah well yeah, yeah. yeah you were you were following him on Instagram right? I was following Correct. him on Instagram I liked he was making these yeti things and now well, he makes various things. He's like a wizard of, I don't know what you call that, CGI or something? Um, Animation? Yeah. Um, well, you're like doing Hyper-realistic. Well, yeah. no, I'm doing it for mm. Lump 2. The second incarnation of Lump is a tool, as in tool. <laughs> is that Lump I <laughs> can hear? Uh, oh, sorry, yeah. That's lump, <laughs> lump, uh, Lump's getting a bit pickish. Um, so he's a tool, tool monster now, as in tutu fabric. He's made out of tutu fabric. Yeah, he's well tutu. He's well tutu. So I'm building a CGI lump at the moment. Learned the software. Yes, but that's not out of the um the tutu fabric. It's probably no, very but it's confusing. it's modelled for... on the tutu fabric. Yeah, we've also got a real life lump who uh, will take on tour with us. But anyway, enough about yetis. Where did you come from? Oh, um, I mean what? musically. Oh, right. Okay. I was born in Winchester Hospital, 1977. <laughs> 1977? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm quite old. Crikey, mm. yeah. But in a cool way, because 77's Death yeah. of Elvis, Birth of Punk. I mean, that is cool. So that's quite cool, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. 
Um, <laughs> Old in a cool way. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> good vintage. Yeah, yeah, good model. Yeah. I'm in a band called Tongue. Mm -hmm. Spelt. T-U-N-N-G. Started a band uh, called Tongue with uh, a guy called Sam Genders mm -hmm. in 2003. And we started making electronic wonk folk. Mm. Uh, Sam, That's Sam's a great singer songwriter, um, specialising in twisted, otherworldly, uh, mo mainly murder ballad and, and death tunes. Mm -hmm. uh, but in a really sort of matter of fact, day to day kind of way, mm. um, and also songs about um, uh, people that get turned into hares and stuff like that. Cool. Uh, but we've done seven albums. We're now a six-piece band. And I guess Tongue kind of changed my life because before that, I was making jingles for porno. Oh. Maybe, maybe didn't tell you, but I think I might Nice do. nugget. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, on a, were you on like a roster of porn I was for like makers? TVX. Um, uh, it was, I had a job basically doing TV music and the guy that ran it was best friends with the guy that ran TVX. <laughs> And I was doing Red Hot Man, Oh Man, Red Hot Old Girl, Red Hot Mature. Um, and they were like... Uh, <laughs> I like, can't believe I've known you all this time. Like, and you've no, I thought I that. told you that. Yeah, you probably wouldn't have worked with me if you meant it. Um, they were like uh, house music, Euro house music with um, heavy metal guitar. Yeah. Pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> if you were ever watching sort of softcore porn in 2001, 2002. Yeah, yeah. No. Which you probably weren't. <laughs> Um, yeah. Anyway, in downtime in the studio, I started making making the tongue stuff, and it got quite successful. And I believe you know some of the early tongue stuff, mm -hmm. and that's why I think when we finally met, I didn't feel too rude to say, "Would you like to make some music together?" Because I heard you once were into my band. I did. I loved. I can't remember which tongue record it was, but I like. I I loved it with oh. the bullets with bullets on it. Oh yeah. The big hit. The big hit. So yeah, that's that's me. And and because of tongue and the success of tongue, and I've kind of found this sound and flavour. Um, I've been producing other people and scratching together some kind of living for for a while. You lived in Iceland for a while. I did. Yeah, yeah. That feels like a dream, like a sort of strange dream now. But mm. lived in Reykjavik for four years uh, and did a solo album called Cheek Mountain Thief. Stole. A 35-piece male drinking choir for the, for the record. I didn't is, know that. Yeah, yeah. A Mike uh, Lindsay solo album. Yeah. Have you mm. not heard it? I haven't heard it. I'm sorry. I didn't I'm do my research for this interview. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, I went out there to live in a cabin for three months. I was, uh, I was falling in love with a girl from Iceland, and we were having some romantic time. She took me to a cabin, and I came back to after a week with her in the cabin. It's empty all winter, I found out. Mm -hmm. and I got back to London, and I thought, oh... Maybe I could just take that cabin by myself for mm -hmm. like three months and build a studio and write some music, which I did. Uh, and then I formed a band out there with the, the drummer was worked in the fish farm. These two like young kids, both 17, Oscar and Birke, were like, uh, just lived in the local village. It was in the north of Iceland. They're like collecting effects pedals and they're both just little, little punks. Got them in the band. Uh, it's an amazing violin player. And then the 35-piece male choir and then some superstars. For, I sort of gathered people. It was great. Wicked. And then um, ended up staying for four years. Uh, and then things twisted and I came back and I've met somebody else <laughs> and I'm getting end. married and everything's great. <laughs> Let's talk about you. <laughs> Can I just address something that we that's skimmed over? Maybe it doesn't matter to you or you don't mind particularly, but I find something incredibly um, rank about the term folktronica, mm. which I think got unfairly applied to tongue. Mm. And I think that would turn me off listening to any kind of music. Mm. I, I often get called folk, which I find gross. I know, but I don't find it gross, folk. Mm. Actually, I love folk music. Mm. And um, I was, it was the time of making the tongue record, I was, I was obsessed with um, Pentangle, John Renborn, Bert mm. Yanks, um, and uh, David Graham, and, and the Wicker Man soundtrack. and. And that film. So I, I, but I know that about you that you find it. Mm. Um, it's almost like a dirty word. Folktronica is a dirty word. Mm. I think that's unforgivable. Yeah, personally. it was a, it was a journalist, journalistic term that kind of helped define a sort of a scene that was sort of 
emerging. Mm. But actually, it helped us quite a lot. Did it? Okay. That right, word. We'll keep it. Go. Because they somehow, the, the newspapers or whatever, thought that tongue kind of epitomised the word folktronica. So uh, it, we just kept getting like written about the whole time. So we thought... That's, that's, what, great, that's yeah. what we are, mate. Don't bite the hand that's what we are. I guess I could take some of that advice. Can I just have a go on my squeaky bottle? Please, bit of ASMR. Hmm. Why don't you like the word folk applied I to think, your music? Well, I just think it's a bit... Um, Sorry, I'll just unsqueak. <laughs> <laughs> I think the word folk is... Um, well, one, it's not where I come from. It's not where my interests are. And... Oh. Uh, I think it's sometimes a bit of a feminized word. Sometimes, I it's applied to women like confessional. Confessional is a very femi feminized word applied mm. to women frequently. Joni Mitchell famously hated being described as confessional. She also hated being described as a singer songwriter. She just liked to be described as a songwriter. And I understand what she means. Okay, I, I get think that. it puts yeah. too much of an image in your mind about what what the music is, and takes away from the sort of just the basic craft of songwriting. Yeah. You know, like if you're a s s somewhat acoustic based artist, the art is in the songwriting. There's no, there's, by nature, there's no adornment to it. So it's not like. Yeah, but, know. you know, I guess um, the singer songwriter thing comes about because traditionally there were songwriters, mm. ghost writers, mm -hmm. like Carly Simon and, um, not Carly Simon, um, um, Carol King. Carol King, yeah. And. Um, uh, what's, what, what's her husband, the, husband, the last two husband, but that duo, you know, uh, she would be a songwriter, but then she broke out to become the singer-songwriter because she's singing her own songs. I guess yeah. that's, that's sort of where it came from. But where did you see yourself when you started out? I mean, started out. Mm. You were not wanting to, to, to be pigeonholed into that singer-songwriter, confessional folk artist. You were, what, a sort of pop kid? No, it's just a songwriter. Oh yeah, can't 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 give it a name. Just songwriter. songwriter. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, look, I get the temptation, but yeah. I think folk in particular. I wasn't brought up in folk music. No. Um, but I also think it's like a a lazy genre. Anyway, this has nothing to do with lump. We just moved back into lump area. Yeah. Well, I suppose because I'm trying to save lump from falling down what I feel to be quite a dud hole. Of mm. being folk. Well, I suppose it is to do with lump because the reason why we both love lump is because we're allowed to sort of lose these past tags and labels and and uh that, that what you know that we are in these other projects and have these other guises and you uh, have said that you kind of create a new persona for lump and you can explore anything you want and um there's no rules exactly which is what's so nice about it mm. but then lump also when we first made the first record, we didn't know each other at all. No. And we met at, we got <clears throat> introduced at an, at an after show of a different gig that I was playing. And then we went in and made that record. You had the music made for that record already. Yeah, not entirely true. I had, had, um, I had two tunes that I was trying to put together to pitch for a short film. Uh, and then the film never got made. And I met you, uh, were supporting Neil Young. Just mm -hmm. going to drop that because it's quite special. Excuse me. That's my uh, slump again. That's, uh, that's lump. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I sort of boldly asked you if, if if you'd be interested in making some music, but I didn't expect you to say, first of all, yes, and secondly, you know what you're doing on Tuesday, which was like the next day. Yeah. So I was I was happy you were coming, but then I thought, oh, fuck, I haven't actually got anything. I don't know. So, but then I had this film soundtrack, and and I think that's where it started. So that became late to the flight, and it also became um, shake your shelter. Yeah. And you arrived in the studio. Yes, we definitely didn't know each other, and I was very nervous. Uh, but that tune kind of really was in a in a. It had all the flutes, and it had had all that that sort of strange um, sort of wibble guitar synth stuff, and that was one hour I'd say that you came in, heard the track had that amazing you look like a crooner in crisis line and and uh i think we didn't even speak i don't think not really didn't really have i think i was fumbled around trying to make a coffee and then um and then you wrote you wrote down the lyrics got on the mic we kind of had had the melody sort of popped out and then it was a well that was nice see you later and we did that about six times so i was writing music after you left i was like oh i better, I better write some more music 
I remember that first day actually the Shake Your Shelter um George had just got moved, uh, he was in Margate and he'd been bitten by a crab and had a spiritual awakening. Oh, that's, that's right. Why, that's right, yeah, that's yeah. That's yeah. why that first line came out. And that sort of set the tone for Lump, future, just like randomness set the tone mm. for future Lump. So when we came to make this this second one, there was never, we never intended to form a band, we never intended to make a whole record. And then the first record went fine. It was nice. We we're very proud of the first record. Still, still am. Still, still am. am. And then, um, we got together last summer or summer 2019 summer 2019 you came to margate i came to margate where you had since moved yes since and still live and yeah still live and we started making what became animal in a similar way yeah we tried to keep the parameters the same so being you you're not supposed to hear anything until you arrive in the studio and then hopefully on first listen, perhaps it might inspire you straight away, spontaneously to see what, what, what flows out of your brain genius box. brain. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, and that's what we did. That's yeah. what we did, yeah. And that's what you did, uh, quite amazingly so. Uh, but there were challenges, more so on this record perhaps than the last record, with sort of tunes in 7-4 and um, kind of a bigger bigger sounding wash of sort of wobble synths and and h949 gurgle space um you know it was harder to to maybe uh sift through when all you want to do is find find the yeah the uh some structure the, yeah. any structure really uh, the, the the going in and hearing things that are in seven that have no that have no like quite often you haven't marked out like a verse or a chorus or well, i can't hear i can't tell so i'm just it feels like i'm listening to a big I don't know like broad picture that yeah. I can't define anything in and then we sort of excavate our way into the song and then we, we figure out a structure from there but it's quite it's quite weird when you first hear yeah because you make like a sound spectrum and then uh, and then we mm. form there are, something there, out of it. it's more arranged than um than that but it just doesn't sound like it <laughs> well, it takes my brain yeah it takes my brain a bit to make sense of it no totally I mean and also I'm I'm very aware of that. I'm whilst making this sound palette, maybe trying to create uh, a sort of a, an arrangement in my mind. And I've even got ideas of where vocals would be and possibly what a vocal could be. But I sort of have to restrain myself from maybe humming a line at you because I don't want to. I don't want to ruin your spontaneous. Because I would never think of something that you've thought of. You know, it's yeah. be, be impossible. So um, that's why I just sort of don't do. I just sit there like this while, while you're listening and just. Try not to interfere. Yeah, yeah, but you did, did do, did all the good stuff. Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah. I try. Um, <laughs> so the theme of this record ended up becoming, you know, like as it's being written, we don't really understand what the theme is, other than that you had set some parameters in sound. Oh. You had the H nine four nine, and yeah. all the tracks were named after various different types of wave like gamma ray and gamma ray they were there was x-ray there was ultraviolet there was some other rays I can't some remember. rays but then <clears throat> the lump voice came, came out of me yeah 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 and the, um, you yeah and oh as in as in you being the the lump voice so you're talking about the um well the tone of the the lyrical oh, your, tone of your the, lump the voice song. yeah yeah the lump mindset um came out and it's turned out to be somewhat similar to the first record in that it's like the upside downy world of lump the weird inside out version of everything yeah there's kind of a slightly creepy but playful um sort of parallel universe where um where lump lives yeah and that i think for me knowing that because we didn't have that in place when we we're making the first record it kind of developed while we we're doing it but knowing that going into this one that's why i could play with those so the H nine four nine even type harmonizer was my toy of th that was new for for that album, the animal. And that's also nineteen seventy seven, which was used famously on. Yeah, it was used on on all the three Bowie and Eno records made in Berlin. So all the kind of weird <laughs> drums, uh, and um, famously, and Visconti Tony Visconti was the producer on that record, and he famously said. When Bowie and Eno phoned him up and said, we'd like you to come to Berlin, we're stuck. 
have you got any interesting instruments or something to bring to the table? He said, oh yeah, I've got the, uh, got this new, uh, new thing just come out, the uh, um, Eventide, it's actually the H910 he had. And when asked what does it do, and Eno and Bowie are on the other end of the phone, he said, oh well it, um, it fucks with the f um, fabric of time and space. And then they both kind of went, ah, get yourself to Berlin. And uh, so that was, um, that's why I bought it. And that's, right. that's all over the record. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that creates lump, lump, um, crunk. Yeah, lump, lump, crunk. And there's also the OP1, my OP1 and my moo grandmother. Well, you've um, long term lent me two quite important. I sense. really like buying things, but I'm I don't always like learning how to use them. Yeah, so you've been the beneficiary. It's really of handy that for me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you want this? Uh, but then for this record, we recorded Matt Ingram in the studio that we're sat in now mm -hmm. on drums. The last record didn't have any drums, so there's a big difference there. There's some sort of power prog. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a direct reference from the the, uh, the live shows that came about from the first record that took on a new kind of um, beastly manner when, mm. we, when we banded them. Yeah, we found a new... Uh astral plane to exist on didn't we mm. don't bring live shows yeah you were you were sort of head down axe in hand <laughs> yeah. shoegaze to the mouth you know what actually funny enough <clears> that <throat> was that tour coincided with i shaved my head in 2004 15 just buzzed, yeah. buzzed it off my britney moment it wasn't quite like that it wasn't dramatic i thought i might look cool with a shaved head and i didn't um, and my hair, for years after that, I was like, everything was going to be okay again when my hair's grown. And by the time we did that lump tour, my hair was as long as it is now, and now I keep it at this length. And I remember thinking that it had lined up. I'm completely sane, but I remember thinking, this not. is this is the lineup <laughs> of it. And then at the shows, I was like, it was just long enough to completely cover my face. Yeah, it was badass. I really, yeah, mm. I took that as a sign. So... We did some shows, we've recorded the album. For the first album, I was using Edward Lear and Nonsense Poetry and Surrealist, the Surrealist Manifesto yeah. as like a jumping off point lyrically. And Ivor Cutler as well, weren't you? Kind of, Ivor um, Cutler, yeah. As a reference. Yeah, 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 I love Ivor Cutler. And then this time I was using Psychoanalysis. Yeah. Um, not in a serious way. You just a, started, I think, when we started making the record. MA? No, not MA. MA. Yeah. Is it an MA Master of... Arts. Yes, I haven't finished actually, so I better not do that hair flick yet, because um, <laughs> it may never happen. Well, it doesn't matter if you haven't finished. You've you've gone deep. You know. I went deep. Well, I certainly mined it for this record. So I was using the language of psychoanalysis, which is um, quite funny. I find it's like the most intimate way you can talk about things, but for people who really are not that interested in intimacy, like psychoanalysis is a very distanced. That it's like an attempt to control the the wildness of the human interior with like sort of like pseudo scientific language. I really love psychoanalysis, but it's it's, yeah. it's funny to me. Because you you got you got interested in it after going to psychoanalysis. Yeah, I went to psychoanalysis because I had a, a a big psychedelic trip that was amazing, and then I lost my and then I my entire being fell in half. You've never been the same since. <laughs> I haven't been the same since, in a good way, mm. but. Um, as can sometimes happen if you have a big sort of whatever spiritual experience or a, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, psychotropic experience. Mm. And then I sort of uh, came undone in the middle and I found psychoanalysis to be the appropriate thing to tie me back up. But, you know, there's lots of talk about the, the symbolic and, and things that are signified being different to the things that they actually are. The way that you describe something is not actually how it is. Yeah. You know, it becomes sort of philosophical in that way yeah. but music and lyrics and art do that generally because you are looking at something and it's having a or listening to something and it's having more of an experience you're experiencing more than what you're seeing or hearing because it has all these chains of association with you mm. so like when I listen back to the lump album particularly this album um you know I'm in everything's written very quickly the lyrics have, were written very quickly in your presence obviously and then when you listen back you hear the different associations that I made that the, 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 I hear because I'm me and I understand the, the associations that I'm making. It's like in a dream where it's like 
you do things make sense but they don't make sense but they do if you un, if you understand the logic of what's happening well they also might make sense to um somebody else in their own way in exactly. their own interpretation um that's what that's what they that's how they make sense to me if you had any interpretations of the lyrics that you've then heard me contradict or were you surprised about what they were well i guess the uh I didn't know what Paradise was, was was about at all. I thought that was sort of quite quite random. I thought it was related to, to psychoanalysis, but then you told me that there was some dream that, that you're basically sort of te- retelling within within Paradise, which I had no idea. Something about a cucumber sandwich? Yeah, my therapist gave me a cucumber sandwich on the bus and then asked right. me out on a date. <laughs> which I did not get from... Yeah. from, from, from in, which was a dream. It didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then in... Um, in Gamma Ray, there's loads of amazing imagery there, um, and 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 so in my mind, I'm just I'm I'm in this sort of strange town square, and there's a kind of a public hanging, and uh, you know, um, or may or is that or is that or is that because I know about this now as well? Is that is that part of a story, or did I imagine this well, and then you the, told me something? The ga- Gamma Ray, which has the lyrics about people what watches gawping. The gawp, the, the, the the yeah, I was just amazed you managed to get the word gawped. Into yeah, into Gorped, a song. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's from um, uh, Georges Brasson. Brasson. He's got a song about a woman. It's called Brave Margot or Brave Margot. Yeah. And it's about a woman um, who lets a cat suckle from her breasts. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't have that imagery in my head either. So, yeah. Well, so, well, I um, hope it stays with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that's <laughs> correct. Sorry, that's totally, totally stuck there. Certainly did um, with me. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I think there's some. Um, that's what's beautiful about about the way you write. It's it is open to interpretation, but you you, you have thought about these things. You you were saying um, you've told me before, and I've seen the notebook that you bring with you, and you you you, you say that you sort of make little notes here or there from either from the psychoanalysis or the first record that you, you know, with Edward Lear and things like that. Yeah. But um, I guess you've been thinking. There's been a thought process. I mean, so let's say. On the way to Margate, mm. this time you're driving your van. Mm. Um, are you thinking on the way? Were you thinking that first one, that first time you came down, about oh, I better better try and come up with some possible words that I could sort of uh, you know mould into what it, whatever I'm going to hear, or are you completely deliberately blank? No, I'm thinking. I think. Oh, I mean, all the time, my whole time that I'm not doing music or interviews I guess which is my, how my life seems is, to work these days yeah. I'm underlining words that are useful because of their meter or sentences that roll very nicely or whatever like in books and newspapers but like um so I'm always using those as ways to sort of rhythmically like like a like a name I'm going to give away the name of my friend here but a name I find incredibly pleasing is the name Lara Melita Munro who's a, that's mm. the name of one of my friends it's just an unbelievably pleasing mm. name. So things like that, I just like things like that, collect things like that. We should that. call our, our third album that. Peter <laughs> <laughs> Monroe, yeah, should be honoured. Anyway, I do think about things like that, but the but usually it's just like the most recent thing that happened. I mean, like a song that is not on the record, we didn't end up using it, the Sphinx song. Sphinx Suicide, best Sphinx tune Suicide, ever written. Suicide, which sounds like a... Um, a uh, spinal tap name for a song. I mean, in it, in the best possible way, yeah. Um, but that was in the newspaper on the way down. I was reading about Dominic Cummings, you know, obviously mm. a super cool guy. And um, he, it was like his top put downs. Did I tell you this? I don't think so, no. His top put, like it was a collection of his top put downs. Whatever you think of him, he's got a top great put, skill put for downs. put downs. And he described um, David Cameron as a sphinx without a riddle. Oh which yeah, which I thought yeah, was brilliant. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I was thinking about that. It's also just a really pleasing Sphinx without a riddle is a really good uh, image. Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. So you're you're doing this, but that's like throughout your day, any day, and then all day, every day, all yeah. day, every day. But you have uh, the flip side is for of the notepad is is doing you're doing the same thing for for Laura Marling, or or you're looking you're, you're looking more sort of in, introspective in in that way. I don't yeah, like I guess squeak the, squeak away. Oops. Yeah, squeak. Mm. Squeak that. Grazie. Lovely stuff. Um, we need to get your pod, a podcast water bottle. I think it's the second podcast. I like the squeak. That's, that's what I do. <laughs> that's it. I don't been really dominated need a drink. by your water yeah. bottle. <laughs> yeah, I have a Laura Marling one, which is just more sincere. It's mostly full of 
Rilke quotes. You know. Oh yeah, so I started thinking you were talking about um, a Laura Marling water, water bottle. bottle. <laughs> oh, yeah. like, well, we don't need to see that book, do we? No, we don't. Need to see that. In the no. world. So I guess um, I guess it's all about looking forward at this point because we've got our shows coming up and where we're sat. We've just been filming um, us playing live for the first time. Mm-hmm. Felt pretty good, didn't it? Did feel good. When we learned how to play it play the songs and we know how to play the songs our drummer's uh partner went into labor in the first five minutes of us arriving at the studio so we had to call in another drummer who learnt the parts in five minutes yes don't tell man that's tell extraordinary that. yeah um it's been really good to turn up the amp mm-hmm. and have drums loud and hear you project and see simon doing my Excellent bass lines, yeah. but better than I can. I'm playing without a guitar most of the time. I was going to say that. That's the first time I've seen you not have a guitar. Ever. Uh, I guess so, ever. Yeah, yeah. How how was that? Because you've, you've, got, you've got hand movements, you've got all sorts <laughs> going on. You know, lots of this. Yeah. Um, I did I did clock it, and I thought, that's new. Yeah, it's new. Um, Somebody asked me in an interview the other day about Lump. They said, uh, you spend a lot of your time moaning about how people are always trying to take your guitar away from you. So Who's trying to take your guitar? Well, I was saying, I've said that. Historically, I've said people quite often try and take my guitar out of my hands. Well, physically? Physically. I mean, not... not fi- or, like, do you, or do you mean if you're working with someone? Yeah, yeah if yeah. I'm working with someone. Well, uh, yeah. yeah, physically, I guess, not metaphorically. For the record, I've never asked you to not play guitar. On this no, I mean, but you've never offered either. No, I'm joking. Um, no, well, I, well, that's just not the setup. Record that we have. three, it's all about you and the guitar. No, no I, vocals. <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> so, couldn't be more thrilled to not have any musical responsibility in this band. Um, but they said, what made you change your mind about this scenario? And I thought, that, I don't know what made me change my mind. I just went into the studio and, and I liked the music that you'd made. And it was never a question of me trying to contribute to it in any way, um, yeah. apart from singing. Yeah, yeah. Obviously. No, I, I never thought to. Um, stick an axe in the hand either really it was yeah. you're far better guitar player than anyone else in the room but that's you know, not because i didn't want to be shown up you know? not quite true but uh, i am very much enjoying not having a guitar yeah. in my hands really enjoying it and i don't know where the hand movements have come from but they seem to be unstoppable i can't seem to stop moving my hands yeah i like it yeah well you you know you're gonna switch 12 string guitar couple of, couple of guitar bits of bits. hand yeah Bits of that. Straightforward, yeah, dead, dead up. Crowd Eyes surf. Up. Crowd surf, yeah. Free massage. Oh yeah. oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that um. is the crowd surf. <laughs> yeah, so that's, yeah, so we've got a handful of shows and then we've got to figure out where to take it from there, I suppose. Yeah. With the live, live We surf. are trying to create a lump. We're trying to build a lump world that people can come to and watch a show in. Yeah, we're waiting for um, this nasty cough that's going around to mm. calm down a bit before we welcome people into a sweaty <laughs> basement. Essentially, is where yeah, it will be. Sweaty underworld. Sweaty underworld. Um, I look forward to being in a sweaty underworld. But we're going to do that, and that's going to be unique and mm-hmm. twisted, right? Yeah. Great. Um, do you have any dreams or aspirations or hopes for Lump? I'd like to. Um, uh, influence every human being on the planet mm, mm. with our genius. Mm. I think it has the potential to do that. It's got the sort of mind control feeling yeah. to it. And then you can analyse. And then I can analyse. That'd be nice. Mm. And then Lump can just become the king. The king. <laughs> <laughs> or queen. Or queen. Okay. Absolutely. No, I don't know. I don't, I've never placed any expectations. I, ju- I just um, just so happy that like the first we the, what's so great about the first record and, and what and how it continues is we never are told anyone we were making music mm. there's no one knows about it we just it was just back to making music because you want to make music and experimenting with the music because you can and there's no rules and there's no boundaries and enjoying that and i think that's what lump is for me and so i would i want to do more mm. and i think we should if we can but we won't tell anyone we're doing it yeah and we'll just do it because we want to do it and so that's 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 been the joy for me. It's just that's pe- a very rare occurrence in modern world. I don't know if it's music making particularly, but to be able to make something 
without needing to take essentially a loan from somebody or hmm. involve lots of people in it or lots of admin that's that's quite a that's quite a unique thing experience for for lump i think well i've never been much of an admin man you know, no but, um actually what it felt it just felt like the old days for me it felt like um before there was I was involved in any kind of industry thing or be, before it was a job maybe even mm. producing and things like that it felt like when you I don't know if you know if you remember back to making your first Laura Marling album but it's the first time mm. and no one before that no one knows anything about you and you know and then you've got you've done this thing and, and then uh, you don't quite get that first time feeling back again yeah. but I got it back with Lump and I and I've got it back again on the second album feels also like the first time because we have a working relationship and we don't see each other that much in between these these things so it kind of feels fresh again you know yeah yeah so um there's my aspirations anyway more of of uh, that feeling more of that feeling yeah mm. I, um, I concur yeah great well um it's been nice mike thanks it's been lovely laura yeah, thank good. you good good, good. bye long long is the product long long is the product Nom nom is the product. Nom nom is the product.